We are in Britannia Beach, a unique dive site in Howe Sound, British Columbia. Howe Sound is a fjord that spans northward from Vancouver to Squamish and then west over to Gibsons. You might not notice by looking at it, but the site was once compromised by long-term pollution from this nearby copper mine. From 1905 to 1974, when the Britannia copper mine closed, 40 million tons of mine waste was discharged into this area. That's the equivalent weight of over 280,000 blue whales. Mine water discharge really impacted the fish and fish habitat in this area. But Britannia and Howe Sound are now in recovery. And one way that researchers can monitor change is by repeated dive surveys over time. Identifying animals under the water is not always easy. That's why we have lead taxonomist from the Vancouver Aquarium, Donna, here to help us out. What challenges do you face when identifying animals under the water? And do you have any advice for new taxonomists? Well, a big part of doing taxonomy is being able to identify animals that don't have a lot of, a lot of marks and, and from a distance. So a big part of diving, you don't have time to look around at all the plants and animals. So the more familiar you are with the bigger things, you can record them quickly. And that gives you time to go and look at the rocks closer and smaller animals and more obscure animals and peek under things maybe. And you can take pictures, videos, stills and get lots of information from that later. But if there's still something you know, you're wondering about and you can't tell what it is, you can always take samples and do DNA. Well, I think we should put our eyes to the test and take a peek at what's down there. Here's a swimming scallop, a type of mollusk. It's a soft-bodied animal protected between two pink shells with ridges on them. It can do something really cool. It swims using jet propulsion, sucking water in and shooting it out. Scallops are related to other soft-bodied animals like clams, octopuses, and sea slugs. Right above it is a giant sea cucumber. Even though it looks spiky, it actually has a body as soft as jello. Mussels are related to scallops. Mussels, like scallops, have two shells that protect their soft body. The soft body is a characteristic that allows us to identify these animals as mollusks. But I can't figure out what type of mussels these are just by looking at them, because different mussel species can look very similar. Only through DNA testing in a lab can we find out for sure what kind of mussels these are. Here are hundreds of common acorn barnacles. While scallops and mussels belong to the animal group Mollusca, barnacles are in the group Arthropoda. That's because they have segmented bodies, kind of like shrimp. But these barnacles are cemented firmly upside down to the rocks. They're using their tiny feathery feet to catch drifting plankton in the water. Another animal classified as an arthropod is the coonstripe shrimp. Like barnacles, they also have segmented bodies. Their bodies are covered by overlapping plates. Although they're protected by exoskeletons, these animals may seek shelter in rocky crevices. Other arthropods that can be found in House Sound include crabs and sand fleas. Sea whips are categorized in a group that we haven't explored yet, Cnidaria. That makes them related to corals, sea anemones, and jellyfishes. The common characteristic that all these animals share is stinging cells. On sea whips, these stinging cells are found on the many polyps that protrude from the stalk. There are so many species found here in House Sound. We saw a lot of animals today. Was this a good representation of how many animals are found here? Oh, not even close. There's been about 700 species recorded in House Sound, so we have to do a lot more diving. Is, it, is recording animals important to do over time? Yeah, it's really important to do because it gives a natural history database that other people can use now and in the future. Because you can't know how, how things have changed if you don't know what was there. So it's very, very important. Now something I learned today was that even if two animals look really similar, they can be completely different species. Oh, so true. Most of my work relies on observation, but there's a limit. And with mussels, it's hopeless. So we really rely on DNA testing and other experts to help us with species like that. Well, we've had a fantastic opportunity to see animals from different groups today. Now, by keeping track of species through careful taxonomy and by noting change over time, we can contribute to the conservation of these waters. Now, this is definitely going to be an area that we'll be keeping an eye on as it recovers from its 100-year mining history.